Good morning, AM Brainstormers. Today in Beijing, China, we are in conversation with Heinz Norbert Jocks, Dominique Garduel, and Sebastian Alonso. The Paris Dusseldorf based Norbert Jocks is a prominent German author, journalist, art critic, and curator. In addition to being a regular contributor for Kunstforum since 1979, he's recorded thousands of interview hours with notable artists, curators, and philosophers, alongside having written and lectured extensively on contemporary Chinese art. A storyteller at heart, the Dusseldorf based Dominique Garduel is a mixed media artist and founding member of the communication design collective Moxie, whose work ranges from video installations to collective productions. Joining as a surprise guest from Montevideo, Uruguay, Sebastian Alonso is an artist, professor, and member of the collective Alonso and Cracion. Working together for 10 years, their work redefines roles within the art world as they blur lines between production, curation, education, participation, intervention, performance, and print. Jacques, Garduel, and Alonso first came together in 2011 to produce a collective exhibition in Montevideo, thus founding the Collective Eye. Having just concluded the Collective Eye Symposium at the Central Academy of Fine Art in Beijing, their work seeks to discuss differences between collective and individual practices. Through exploring the motives, conditions, and values that give rise to collectives, they slowly understand how individual and group subjectivities allow these collectives to strategically distinguish themselves. In conversation today, the three will discuss the role of collectivity when applied to the development of hybrid disciplines, specifically discussing how individual disciplines can be collectively fused to reinvent user experiences, encourage cultural engagement, and subsequently grow boundaries of individual creative practices. Bhaktagon would like to give special thanks to Opera Bambana for their freshly baked pastries, The Other Place for their beautiful courtyard space, and Cruz Garcia for assisting with Spanish translations. Today, um, we have them here and we're going to be discussing um, collectivity and the uses of collectivity to discover the individual, but also how individuality is needed to form that collective whole. Um, I think that uh, what exactly does collectivity mean within the realm of cross-disciplinary practice? And how are you, as very unique individuals with different individual practices and interests, um, how do you come together to form the collective eye? So, but what bring, brought us together was really that we had this experience, the same questions that brought us together, like asking why are we, ask, we, we are working in a collective, or like from the intellectual way, why, why artists are working in a collective, what does it mean? Is subjectivity still alive in a collective? Because there are some perhaps saying the opposite, and um, all the questions about the art market. I can't explain everything what brought us together because we would stay the entire day, because we spent the first time we met, we, 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 we spent one week discussing these questions. <laughs> it, but we were coming together, it was an accident, and on the other side, it was not an accident. It's working in a collective, but in a way that he doesn't know it. For example, someone, a writer like me, uh, I'm writing, okay, I'm alone with it, but on the other side, I'm always together with everything what I have read. I'm together with, uh, with writers. Uh, I read their books. So I'm connected with the consciousness of other people. And so I would say nobody can be without a collective. But the most of the people uh, don't realize what they are in a collective with <coughs> other thinkers, with other writers, with other artists, uh, and so on. Uh, you can't answer what is a collective because, like he said, even though he's working alone, he it works kind of in, with his collective partners, which are uh, write other writers in this uh, in this case. But because often people are coming to us and what is a collective? Is like uh, Lucien and Jorge Orta who, who do the performance. They are like a couple. This is not a collective. Some people it's not a collective, and so there is no answer. What is a collective in in one way? It's only the, the talk about the collective way, that every time in a collective there are individuals, and this can be like one individual, a collective, collective work, or like two, or like in my case, like eight, or, you know, 
So this is, uh, I think, important. Or like, like Sebastian, he works together with one guy, and then he has a project where he works with 100. I don't know, like the the, the new one. Bueno, uh, como para para hacer una introducción sobre sobre la definición de lo colectivo. Uh, I'm gonna start by making a definition of uh, what the collective means. Para mí es una una suerte de imposibilidad uh, al, al día de hoy poder defi poder definir qué es un colectivo artístico. Uh, that, uh, imposibilidad. Uh, uh, he believes that it's in, uh, impossible to define what a collective is today. Uh, incluso creo que este grupo se ha formado como un grupo y no como un colectivo. Uh, and he believes that uh, this has been gathered up as a group instead of as a collective. Que tiene intereses disímiles. Uh, disímiles. Diferentes. Uh, uh, that they got, they got the different, uh, different objectives, goals. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, y desde el principio, desde que nos conocimos en el 2011. Since the beginning, when we met in 2011. No estuvo claro que cuál era el tópico de por, por el cual estábamos juntos. It was not clear the the topic that the, that that make us go together. Como Norbert lo dijo. Like uh, Norbert said. Y el colectivo en el cual participo sí que creo que es un colectivo es un dueto pero es un colectivo. And uh, he actually participates in a collective of a, of a duo that is a collective also. Our top, nuestro nuestro tópico en en, esa, en en ese momento en el 2011 para diseñar la exposición que nos reunía a todos. The, our topic in 2011 that uh, was designed to put everybody together is collaboration. Is collaboration. ¿Qué es la collaboration? What is collaboration? Hicimos una una señal, un cartel de neón en la entrada de la exposición. We made a neon sign in the entrance of the exposition. Con neón, con luz. Uh, with the neon lights. Que con, que que decía en español colaboración. That says in Spanish collaboration. That is collaboration. Y ese, esa forma de, de introducir nuestra manera de entender lo colaborativo. And that was our uh, way to introduce our understanding of what collaboration was. Era nuestro punto inicial para empezar a trabajar juntos. It was our starting point to start working together. Yo creo que en esa exposición no logramos colaborar, eh, no logramos traducir efectivamente qué es la colaboración. Yeah, we, we, I think that in that point we didn't manage to achieve what collaboration was. Pero empezamos. But we started with it. Uh, yo creo que la colaboración eh, básicamente eh, promueve eh, poder poner, poner en escena los intereses de cada quien. Uh, I think that collaboration uh, manages to put in, together in a stage all the interests of everybody. Y no se trata solo de, de, de la escena artística. And it's not only on an artistic scene sino que incluye o que nos proponemos incluir en, en, en esa escena uh, but that we propose to include in that scene distintos sujetos que practican el social that the different uh, different subjects that practice in the social aspect uh, uh, eso es como para empezar <coughs> that's uh, just to start okay okay yeah, yeah. yeah i mean i just want to add that this is the perfect example uh, of uh, the question of subjectivity in a collective because the one side is a group the other side is a collective it's a friendship it's you know it's not defined but what it's clarify that i'm talking about something he's talking about something completely different and this guy is just telling something what he wants to tell you see but we're working together and this is like we don't have the same idea on things we just have, a, have a, like, like the same way we want to go, that we know, like even by, by mystical, <laughs> no, but we, we, we have, to, because we talk a lot about that, so it's just a perfect example of the question of the individuality in a collective, because we, I, I mean, I, I think you're a little bit confused, because I would be confused in your place, what I say, what he say, what he's saying, there's like, so many different things about, he's talking about the exhibition, he's in generally, I'm talking about this symposium, and you know, so this is how I took the good real real life example, the introduction of like, what is a collective. We, we are not prepared to, to, to today in the morning. And so we are we, we start to create something and we didn't have spoken about it before and, right. and so on. And the problem of what is interesting for me in a collective is everyone has his own ideas, but in a collective you have to try to find connection in between. And what is interesting for me, it's not only that everyone has his own su subjectivity or his own ideas. For me, it's interesting too, but I can work with younger people. 
and I realize I'm a little bit older. So, so I, if, if the, the, the base problem is in order to work in a collectivity, and this is really my experience, you have to be open for the others. Yeah. You cannot say what I'm thinking is true, and you have to do it now. This is something what I did before when I'm writing alone, and what I have learned or what I'm learning now, never I have right. I have to give my idea and to wait what <laughs> the other person is thinking about and I have to be open for it in the way that I restart my thinking mm -hmm. and by I react on what the other person is saying and but we find a way in between in order to create another kind of subjectivity and this is what Deleuze uh, uh, called uh, subjectivity of group. Before, in the Marxism, it was the idea everyone is lost in a collective. But the new idea on which we, uh, all the uh, collectives worldwide are working to find another idea of it. Not to lose his own, but to put it together so that the creativity is more rich after. We were coming from different disciplinary backgrounds and as a result are speaking these different languages almost. Yeah. How do you go about finding those kind of opportune ways of bringing your languages together and understanding the background of each individual's language or discipline in a way that you're able to come together and create something that is unique and different and kind of as the collective, as this hybrid discipline, it is above all of the other disciplines. But then it allows you to go back into your discipline and almost expand the boundaries of your own individual practice. Well, <laughs> it's a kind of a delirious way <laughs> of doing it, I think, in a way. Yeah, experience that. Uh, yeah, in fact, I, I may intend to respond a little bit with the experience of the exposition of 2012. I'm going to try to answer with the experience of the exhibition in 2012. Para mí fue, fue, una, fue, un, fue un primer paso conflictivo en el hacer juntos. Uh, for me, it was a first, if, I, if it was a first conflictive step in the making together. Porque inicialmente la parte uruguaya, digamos, la parte sudamericana, que fue ordenada y curada por nosotros. Because the Uruguayan uh, part of the exhibition that was curated by us. Nosotros elegimos básicamente una, un grupo de... De, de colectivos que no se autorrepresentan como colectivos artísticos. That they choose uh, to show a series of, of collectives that don't present themselves as collectives. Y eso, eso fue conflictivo para con la parte curatorial europea. And I was very conflictive with the, curatoria, uh, with the European curatorial uh, part. Porque los grupos y colectivos artísticos que Norbert y Dominica habían trabajado eran efectivamente artistas. Because the, the artist groups that the Norbert uh, and sorry Dominique. and Dominique uh, organized were uh, were identified as artists. O sea que la, la, el primer reto colectivo de este grupo fue poner en, en digamos en, en un espacio reunir grupos de gente disímiles efectivamente. So the first challenge of this group was to put in, a, in the same space uh, several dissimilar groups. Y no fue nada sencillo. And it was not simple at all. Yeah. Uh, nuestro, básicamente nuestro tópico <coughs> de Uruguay, insisto, uh, fue posicionar un discurso que tuviera que ver con ciertas prácticas de resistencia a la gentrificación. Mm. So our, uh, our topic from the Ur Uruguayan side uh, was to to address uh, some issues that had to deal with the gentrification uh, resist, uh, resistance to gentrification que son unos una serie de procesos que están siendo digamos relativamente nuevos en tanto más que nada en el cono sur en la parte de Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, parte de Brasil there are new new uh, issues to deal with in the cono sur in the in South America the region that includes Uruguay, Chile, Argentina and Brazil Por eso es que nosotros entendemos que la colaboración, la única manera posible de establecer eh, vínculos colaborativos es intentar, digamos, eh, trascender el campo artístico 
y promover la participación de otros agentes sociales. Porque creemos que la única manera de trascender en términos del discurso es ir más allá de la escena artística y incluir otros sociales agentes. Sería yeah. interesante to speak about but, but uh, we have not enough time about uh, the cultural difference between collectives in South America, yeah. North America, Europe and so on in, in China and, and we will realize what were our real cultural differences. It's not because of the political conditions in China or political conditions in South America, it has to do uh, perhaps with another kind of strategy. Yeah. Because I realize, we realize, we have invited Voina, uh, a very strong uh, collective in uh, in Moscow. Voina Art Group. Uh, Voina Art Group. And this Voina Art Group is in the under, underground. And well, they change every, t every uh, day uh, their home place because the police is looking for them and we will have a big problem. And when we, we, con we have, uh, uh, we connected them about Facebook. And they gave us directly the email address because it, it was more safe. They change every day the place. And, but there are other groups, collectives, uh, who are thinking in the same direction, but still alive, and they have their apartment in Beijing without having a, kind, uh, without having a problem. And for me, it was interesting to think, or for us, it was interesting to think why. Yeah. And one reason, for example, uh, could be what European thinking, for example, or uh, the Russian thinking is we want to make a revolution and we want to change the world and it has to, we have to do it now and we are, are not thinking about in which way we can survive now, what we can do really without, uh, so that it's not dangerous, so we find a way every moment we realize this is possible now without being in danger. But for European culture thinking is, we have to make the revolution, we, do, we don't think now what we can create now, so that we can survive, we want to make the revolution now, directly. And so, the Russian collective has a problem, because we are doing things, uh, and this is a cultural difference, I think so. And we, uh, we, we never have spoken about it, what is the... South American thinking to create something for, for, for example, a collective uh, who's in resistance against society or yeah. against rules or something. Never we have spoken about it, but we ha have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. But then I think that there is um, the way in which you come together as a collective obviously is influenced by your cultural um, backgrounds and as a result, like who you are as an individual and why you have, there is that subjectivity that exists. But then how does the collective, once it has found that way to come together, regardless of their cultural differences, how do they exist within these, this multifaceted world that does have all of these different cultures? And how does it engage itself with different audiences? Does it have to kind of redefine itself, whether it is doing an exhibition in Montevideo versus in Beijing versus in Europe? Or what is that relation? In, uh, uh, when, when we start to create our collective, it was not clear which role everyone has. And with the time, for example, one it's time... It's not clear yet. No, 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 no yeah. yeah. But can, can you speak about in which way we find the roles inside yeah. of a collective? I mean, it's just like we, we, we get together with the same idea or with the same vision of the future or of the project but we didn't know the way and we don't know yet like you have like a bubble where people coming in and people going out but some people will stay so it really exists because at the end you have in a collective even we are like now four or five then perhaps next year we are seven and then another year we are three but you have to be there has to be a like a center of the collective who is really there and uh, this is in development because we have our cultural differences too like we had in south america when we started there it, it, it's always starting with a chaos with a big mess it's always starting more with, waiting time when working time yeah uh, or, yeah or like differences because of language right. you know and cultural backgrounds and different experiences but the same way it's working in a good way to if you say I work in a collective, you have to say 100% for you. 
I, I, I will do everything now for that project, for the collective. No matter what he's saying to me or no matter what happens, then it works out. Otherwise, I don't know, there's thousands of collectives who split it already because of one time, perhaps you have the feeling it's not enough to be not the author of that piece. You know, because, or I can't say the collective five symposium is my project. I did it. You know, I, can't, I, I can never say that. And, and I cannot say it too because yeah, without he, him, he can't, he can't without say it too. Him, I couldn't. Well, but, I, but perhaps so, in the beginning we have to make it a little bit clear the idea of collective I. <laughs> uh, obviously, the we are the collective I project is always more global. Like we are, we are working on the global questions. So, so the objective is clear. We are working on, on like we have from we have invited a collective from Russia, from uh, uh, North America, South America, uh, China, of course, Europe, Germany, France, and so we are working on the basic questions of, of co working collectively and what does it mean losing the authorship, uh, um, what does it mean my political system, I want to express this in my work, why am I doing it in this way, Chinese artists in, this, in, in, this, in that way and German artists in this way. So, uh, like this is, this is interesting because we work together, we, we had the problems, cultural differences in South America, now for uh, uh, China, we are lucky that we or that Norbert no, no knew people who wanted to participate on our project. Because without participating, participating without collaboration, the Collective I project wouldn't exist here in, in China. I think that it's interesting because you know, like this is uh, something that's been talked about and discussed for a long time. I mean, Aristotle talks about how the individual must have the collective to exist. Yeah. And if it doesn't have the collective to exist, either it's a beast or a god, because it can exist as an individual unit. Yeah. But it is this kind of, you can't also have just the collective, you must have the individual. And there is this very key relation between the two, and they kind of feed off of each other. And the individual is able to pull this kind of nourishment and energy for themselves so that they can continue their existence as an individual, but at the same time, they must be able to give back to that collective, to the core. Otherwise, that collective falls apart and then they don't have a means of it. That's in a, the idea of putting collective under one definition is, uh, is very difficult because everybody works in a different way. For example, like we work in a different way. Like What you're saying completely doesn't apply. Everybody inside you don't know who's making what. There's no there's no authorship never in any project. In this case, they're, they're more like individual people working in collective projects. Uh, that's mm -hmm. how I see it. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like you don't work together all the time. You haven't no, seen it in six months. We don't have, we, we don't have an, an art object. Before. You know, we don't, we don't make a sculpture and say, okay, who did it? You know, we have more like... It's and of course, you have different objectives more too. More theoretic. So, yeah. so yeah. also you can belong to, like uh, he belongs to another collective at the yeah, same sure. time too. I got a question going back to the because I was more interested when the discussion was going to the I wouldn't call it cultural differences it's more mm -hmm. like a your really particular reality in your place where you are being practicing mm -hmm. uh, like when you were mentioning that you have all this uh, I understand because I come from Latin America it's like and, and I don't know if it's because of the artist wants to do that or politics but it's because they lack a, an infrastructure of art like for example in Europe there's uh, plenty of infrastructure art, so you actually can be really angry with society and put it in a museum. While mm. in La Latin America, there are very like few, like uh, the infrastructure of, of art is really like in a, it's very different than uh, than Europe. It's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> I mean, in some places like Mexico, there are some like a really important museums, but yeah. mostly you have people breaking stuff and like uh, it's more political in the in the classical sense. Like you have to go in the street and put camps and like mm -hmm. uh, paint yourself and like uh, put your finger like this, it doesn't belong in the to the white box so yeah. I was thinking like how, how do if because it's really different things I mean Germany it's really different to, to Uruguay I can I can guess just yeah. by uh, taking a wild guess in, in sense of that sure, in that infrastructure of the art here in China on the other hand there's a lot of infrastructure for art if you haven't mm, yeah. you have seen I mean there are like uh, endless amounts of museums yeah. And uh, and I mean even graf even graffiti is in seven nine eight if you if you've seen it like art, sure. street artists here do it in the walls of the of the galleries it's not really a street thing uh, sure. uh, when you when you work in these projects those those things you take them into consideration like on purpose like uh, you really want to highlight like no you know you should understand this thing like the more Latin American way or like 
uh, no, you know, I think that it should be done more in this uh, particular uh, uh, set of boundaries and rules that you apply to, to the European uh, way of, uh, of practicing art and being an artist or curator, or etc., etc. I think it happens without consciousness. And I, I think, it w I, I said in the beginning it was an accident what we found together, yeah. but on the other side it was not an accident, because if we think about why we are working with you in South America, and why we are working together, and now here with Luz and uh, Sandy, it's not only an accident, it's because every one of us has his own reason why he is interested in other cultures, why he wants to do something in Europe or in China and so on. But it's an op open mind for things who are different in different cultures. And this is, some, this is something uh, perhaps a base without what we have the consciousness, but, but, but this is something what brings us together too. Mm -hmm. If you would not be interested uh, to, to come to China, you would I wouldn't be, come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea of the, the relationship or importance of the collective in parallel to the internet and <coughs> the increase of the networking of the internet and how it, it allows us to facilitate hmm. our ability to stay connected or find out about things that are happening in different parts of the world? I don't know if you have any idea. Yeah. You can answer personally, perhaps, I do, because like, my, I'm, I'm not in an art collective in a way, you know, and we found out, of course, the internet is the same for everyone. People like we learned or like we know in a collective, we are just individuals. So it's the same, like for the internet for a collective, it's the same like for an individual. You need it to connect to everyone and so on. But really to work in a collective, you, it's not that you can say, okay, we have internet, we can stay connected everywhere, we can be a collective. You should meet persons, each other. You should talk each other, but otherwise the collective can't exist. This is my experience. Yeah, we, because I made it, like with my collective, First, we, we get together, we hadn't, hadn't a place where we could work together, we tried over internet, Skype, all that shit. And this is human, ex collective is still, it's a human touch in it, you know. This is why you choose collective, because you're so lost in the internet world, you're, you're like looking for new families. Everyone is looking for new families, because the computer is said, saying to you, I'm your family now, but your body, your soul, it feels it's not true. You're, there are no real human connections, because we lose human contact with the internet and the new digital world and this is what I think why so many collectives are growing up right now because everyone wants to be in touch with people and want to make projects in the way that that human being has to make have to make projects so this is why I think the internet is for useful for working like same like an individual but in the same way it's pushing you in a, a new in a collective because you're so alone with this internet digital world and you want to be connected, that's why you are in the internet, but the collective connects us in a real way because we are in Beijing now and we were in Montevideo and we can talk about Latin America, you know, this is happening because we are interested in collective, we are interested in human relationships. Uh, so for, for us, the internet is a tool. Uh, right. We couldn't work together if we uh, didn't, uh, if we have not changed to use internet or to Skype, because when we have a preparation, we have not the money to, to go every time to Montevideo and or to have a, a short talk. So we, we did it by Skype, but it was different, because you have not the feeling what you are in front of someone. It's an illu illusion. I just want to add something when you finish. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just wanted, of course, because we are, the question is too, like, what is a collective? And so for us, or for me, it's also like, um, if you see the revolution in Tunis, in, in Tunisia, for example, this is, without internet, this big collective, which were really fighting against the government and everything, wouldn't happen without internet. And this is kind of collective work, because you have the, you have the uh, social media channels now, where you can organize really in a hurry, uh, uh, like saying, come to this place, come here, come over there, and we have to go there because police is coming and bam, 100 people were there. So this is a big collective which exists only, of course, because of internet, but in another way, we, it's like, you know, I say it's, it's a tool and uh, we think that it's getting... We need but to but is it not a chicken, a chicken or egg thing? Because uh, hmm? you, that's a, it's not a chicken or egg thing? Because yeah. we might think yeah. that it may not happen, but actually mm -hmm. we know yeah. That it happened because of the internet. So it's like it's but the same with the artists. The same, yeah, yeah. Maybe there are more because we can actually see them on Google. But before they were there, but nobody saw it. Sure. But, in, but in order to change, if 
you are thinking in a revolutionary way, the body must be aware. Yeah. It's not going, if you write something on the internet or if you are connected, yeah. nothing happens. You have to be together on the street in order to change something. So the, the body is more important. But so internet is only a tool. If you would create only a collective, and perhaps it exists only uh, by in a virtualization way, it's fine. But it's a kind of creating a family. For for me, for example, I work only alone at home every day, and it's uh, a shit feeling. <laughs> sometimes it's a lot of fun, I guess. You have a lot of fun too. It's working. It, it's a work that you cannot do with, with someone in a room and so on. But on the other side, I do it too because I like to sit in a coffee and to write well. But what was interesting <coughs> for me, because the time when I was younger, <laughs> I was still in a group. There was an internet, really. <laughs> <laughs> the time before internet, really. <laughs> <laughs> Stop to work. Uh, no. And for, for, in order to give a very special individual experience, hmm. I stopped to be together with people when I uh, le left the school. I was a little bit together with people uh, at the university, but with group feeling it was lost totally. But I like it very much, but I cannot explain why I lost it. And for me, this idea to d create something together was to restart this kind of being a group. Mm. And uh, I, I can say that I like it. We, we have a lot of fights, <laughs> but I like it very much because uh, you can, because you are together. You, ha you have not the feeling to be alone on the world. And, and internet. <laughs> You are writing 24 hours uh, with someone uh, never you have seen him personally and you lose your time and you don't realize that you lose your time. But when the body are on the stage or everywhere, it's, it's a, it's a changement. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's um, important to formalize and define that collective as being a collective versus just kind of allowing no, it to naturally arise? Because if you think about it, like we literally have just formed like a collective within this room right now. It's, you know? it's, not, it's not important to, to, to find a definition, but it's important to, to, to know a little bit about what we want. And the idea of, meta, the idea of collective I is a kind of meta-collective. The idea was we like to travel around. Okay, one point. Mm -hmm. The second point is we li like to be in touch with people, but in reality. And the other point was to say, okay, normally artists are working for themselves, and after we have an exposition, someone is writing about it, but he is outside of the creation. And our future idea of Collective Eye is to put theorists, thinkers, creators, and uh, our collectives together in a way that we are working together. And the idea of the symposium now, if it's function or not, we cannot say it before, is to create a kind of temporary collective. Like now we, we, we hope that we can create questions together we didn't find before, and we, can, we hope that we can find a way to find response. But for us it's not important to have a response at the end. For us, it's not important that something is defined. Because the Chinese thinking, and I have understood it in this way, everything is fluid. You cannot, you cannot say, this is now a definition of, because tomorrow is another day, and tomorrow it has changed, perhaps you go in a di another direction. And, and for me, it was interesting, uh, uh, where is a poem? Uh, you know it. Uh, someone is waking up in the morning and he has the idea to visit a friend whom he didn't have seen since perhaps 10 years and he takes the boat, he's coming to his house but he's not knocking on his door. He's going back without having seen it again. But for him, the way to this house to have this idea on the road, it was okay, but it was not so important to have a result in the way, what way 
meet, meet can meet, have a drink or coffee or, or whatever. And with the Chinese thinking I like very much, I'm not on the level of it because I'm functioning Nobody. very in a European way. Mm -hmm. but, but I like this idea, and, and therefore I under, have understood that to define something, to bring it to a result, absolutely, it's, uh, for me, I do it, but I, for me, I find it shit. We don't know what we will do tomorrow. It's just perhaps, starting a dialogue. Perhaps we, 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 because sometimes we make a joke because there is so much stress, and sometimes he could kill me, and sometimes I could kill him, and sometimes I could kill him. Uh, but on the other oh. side, <laughs> no. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's a metaphoric. <laughs> ah, okay. It's my way of <laughs> you, you, you told in the beginning. Everyone who wants to, to, to be in a collective has to know on the way to a project there will be pro problems, but we have to find a way to handle all these problems in a nice way. We, we, we hope that this is open a process of thinking. This is what we want. Not to be that everyone knows now what is a collective. You cannot say it because every collective is working in a totally different way. And it would be a shit if you would give a definition of it and you have to say now, oh, open the book with the definition of a collective and you can create now a collective. It doesn't go. This podcast was produced in collaboration with Michelle Proxel. Join us next month for a conversation on composition, instrumentation, and musical performance in the contemporary age.